Hello. We're here to discuss today my Sensenka cycle and how the breakthroughs in thermodynamics had helped us to introduce the next step in evolution of energy, its history, and where it's heading. You had might seen this device before in the discussion regarding the cooling technologies. However, I would like to talk to you bigger, about bigger application of this technology. The device you see, referred to as a heat and mass exchanger, is based on the 50 years of research by Dr. Professor Valery Maisatsenko. It utilizes evaporation as a means of deriving power. As you can see, the motor pushes the air through the device with the two thermometers measuring difference in temperatures between the inlet temperature and the output temperature. The device is made out of clear plastic, so you can clearly see it does not contain any mechanical components. It also has no refrigerants and made out of very simple materials such as paper and cellulose. The thermometers, as they indicate right now, are cooling the air in this room only about approximately 5 degrees Celsius, from 24 degrees to about 17 degrees. However, the biggest potential of this technology and the biggest difference between what has been known for the last 10,000 years as an evaporative cooling comes in light when exterior temperature is rising. Unlike any other known technologies in the world today, when the capacity of the device, such as your car engine, refrigerator, uh, air conditioner, with the demand comes the decreased capacity or need for an additional energy for device to keep up. It is not so with the Mysatsenka cycle. We will demonstrate the additional heat by adding it through the basic home hair dryer. When we add additional heat to the equation, as you can see the temperature of inlet rapidly rising, while the output temperature remains the same. As you can see, we are already achieving 50 degrees of temperature difference between the inlet and the output, while device is not consuming any exterior source of energy such as electricity. You might have seen this demonstration in the past with an applications concerning the cooling. However, this is only one small application out of another possible hundreds or more. As you can see, when the device was doing the cooling from 50 Celsius or more to the temperatures of about 17 degrees, where does that energy come from? Because I assure you there is no genie in that bottle. The power to cool comes directly from air inside this room. In fact, that's the second biggest advantage or the uniqueness of my Satsenka cycle, is ability to convert scientific term latent heat of air into the energy or power. The same device, which as we apply for a cooling technology today, can be utilized to produce water via distillation, desalination. It can be used to produce water directly out of air. It can be also used to power. It can power your vehicle. It can power the train, the plane, the ships. Any type of engine can be adapted to function not through the technology of the building high difference between the high temperature and the low temperature, but through the process of the changing water into vapor, which releases five times the amount of energy contained in a simple heat exchange. What is the implication of this technology? You probably know that today, most of the efficiencies of engines, refrigerants, uh, air conditioners are barely reaching 20%. Meaning that from every dollar you put in your gas tank, only 20% go to driving your car. The 80 cents you toss away 
And not just you're throwing that away, you're also causing pollution associated with the known thermodynamical cycles, such as cycle Carnot. Let's reduce the global cooling. Let's change our pollution. And let's bring it to the people around the world who are in need of it the most. Thank you for your attention.